I'm Emily Kinski, a professor at West Texas A&M University, and I'm so excited to have Erin Hardigan with us today, who works for Fox Sports Southwest, and she works as a host and reporter and has exciting things to share with you about her experiences. And so I'll just go ahead and throw it over to her. Erin, can you tell us more about the work that you do and typical tasks, tasks that you have each day? Okay, well, first of all, I must let you know that I missed high school so much through quarantine that I got braces on my bottom teeth. So if it's hard for to like understand me, that's not only usual, but probably more so um, now that I'm, I'm back to metal mouth. But uh, thrilled to be here. I, I appreciate you having me. I'm like so honored to be a part of this. And um, gosh, it, literally, I will do anything for my alma mater because it is why I am where I am today. So um, I will tell you, Emily, I graduated in 2009, which is now over a decade, which I believe classifies me as officially old um, to, the current, to the current students. Um, I am actually originally from Omaha, Nebraska. And for so long, I, I, I still get people that are like, how the heck did you end up at WT from Omaha, Nebraska? Well, a softball scholarship um, was what did it. And I'm so thankful for it because again, um, I would not be where I am today without WT and the people I came across, the experiences I got from my time there, um, the connections I made, um, obviously just kind of um, becoming a, a, a Texan as well. I mean, that, that helped me. That's kind of why I am I'm still here today, which is great. Um, I began my journalism career at WT as a print major actually. Um, and in joining NBS, that is kind of where I met Dr. Lee Browning, Randy Ray, and a number of other connections that encouraged me to maybe flip to broadcasting because I, I loved writing. I loved storytelling. Like that's what I wanted to do. But I realized in broadcasting, I could still do that, but become, you know, make myself a little more versatile, do more, um, broaden my skill set, which is great. And I will get into that coming up on, on why that is important today. Um, so I became a broadcasting major, played ball throughout my four years, and upon graduation, I, I would go home and intern in the summers um, at the Omaha World Herald, my paper back home, um, in various capacities, and that was key because those connections there, and again, as I, as, I, as I ramble here, but as I take you on my journey, I want um, those listening to keep in mind a couple of things. One, never stop networking, and two, never stop learning. The connections I made at each job or internship along the way landed me my next opportunity, and I'll kind of walk you through that. But I, again, I interned at the World Herald. A connection I had there was what helped get me my first job out of college um, in Kansas City. It was a small startup company. I, it, it kind of offered me the position of everything. <laughs> I mean, I was like, I was shooting, I was editing, I was diving into sports sales and marketing. So I was seeing like the business side of things. Um, it was great to kind of get my feet wet in several different areas. Um, I realized quickly that the business side of, of broadcasting and of, of media was great, but I missed, again, the storytelling and the people. So I wanted to get back into reporting. Turns out my former director in Kansas City happened to be a University of Kansas graduate with a man in charge of hiring with Fox Sports. They were still friends to, the, you know, to that day, and they, he, of course, introduced me. Um, to the contact at Fox. He said, hey, I have a position in Dallas available. It's uh, a, a poorly paid one, but it, you get to cover college football recruiting. I'm like, recruiting? I'm like, is that a thing? I realized quickly it most definitely is, and it's only grown since then, but I, 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 I jumped at it. Again, I, I took any opportunity I could, um, and I, of course, wanted to get back to Texas, so I became an expert in college football recruiting. I mean, I dove in, and I I decided like I am going to become the best at covering this and I am going to be a source for radio or TV as kind of an insider. You know, I reached out to radio shows and TV shows said, Hey, I, I can break down every big 12 college football recruiting class for you. I can tell you where Jamal Adams is going, Miles Garrett, you name it. Fox Sports Southwest was one of those local regional networks that would have me on, on signing day shows or various high school shows that they had. Um, and that is where my third lesson comes in. You never know who is watching or listening. Um, the the uh, coordinating producer in charge of hiring talent at Fox Sports Southwest happened to see me on a couple of those shows. He's like, oh, you're actually pretty good. I'm like, I and mean, I dabbled in broadcasting. He's like, you know, I mean, it was it, it, just time and place, right? Sometimes you just, it, it, it's luck, but it's also taking those opportunities and being prepared for them. 
um, when that luck meets you. And that's what ultimately landed me in my part-time and, and full-time position with Fox Sports Southwest. So long story short, um, I never stopped networking and connecting and reaching out to people. The answer is always no until you ask, until you ask for help. And people are always willing to help if you seek that. So um, those are some important lessons I learned along the way. I loved that phrase about where luck or when luck meets you too. That's great. Um, tell us more about what you're doing now for Fox Sports. So now I am, I am mainly a host. I host the pregame and postgame shows for the New Orleans Pelicans, um, the NBA team, which is, which is a blast. I also host pregame and postgame for the Texas Rangers, sideline games as well. Um, and then I host our three-hour Texas high school football show each and every Friday night. We bring you five hours of Texas high school football coverage because it is that big in this state. Um, and, uh, and it's so much fun. And, and so I, I, I think I kind of like the, I like being able to cover, cover multiple sports, obviously. Um, but uh, it has been what I, I began with Fox on the dot-com side in 2010. Um, and then with Fox Sports Southwest since like 2013, so it's been like seven years now, which is crazy to think about. Um, but again, I promise you I would not be here without the opportunities and the experience that WT um, helped give me. So important for students to start working toward those goals while they're in school. Yeah. You know, and I will tell you this, I, when I, I, I remember upon graduation, I was competing with a lot of um, students that graduated from major universities, you know, the Syracuse, the USC's, the Florida's, you know, the, the major J schools and broadcasting schools. And I will tell you, the name has nothing to do with it. It is, it, it's not the name of the school. It, it's really not the name of the university. It, it is your experience. Employ all employers care about is what can you do? What do you know? What can you do? And I will tell you, I hit the ground running as a freshman at WT. I was, I was holding a camera, I was shooting, I was editing, I was reporting, I was producing. As a freshman, so many of those major universities, I mean, you're lucky to maybe touch a camera by junior year. And, and it's all about reps. It is repetitions. And again, it is baptism by fire. It's through experience. You got to just get out there and do it, make mistakes, learn along the way. That's, that's how you, that's how you grow in this industry. Um, and so that, that's what WT provided me. Um, NBS was a great source of mentors and colleagues that I could just like, I could learn from. And again, I, that goes back to me saying, never stop learning. I'm still learning from colleagues today, picking the brains of like Dana Larson, who is like an icon at Fox Sports Southwest. I'm learning from her daily. Um, Rick Renner, he is one of the greatest preparers you will ever find. He also has the best hair and it's like the first thing people ask about. <laughs> but he, uh, but, you know, it, it's like, all, you know, continue to, to pick brains and, and ask questions and learn from those around you and continue to, to reach out and connect with people because you don't know who they know and who their connections know. And so if you, I always believe if you do the footwork, opportunity will meet you halfway. What kinds of things, you mentioned how important it is, um, what you can do, you know, coming out of college, what can you do? Um, what kinds of things would you recommend students today have in their portfolio to be able to show what they can do as they graduate? I would say make yourself a one-man band. Um, that is of extreme value today, is if you can shoot, you can edit, you can be a field producer. I mean, you can produce your own stuff in the field. You can report. Um, you, you know, you can have a presence on camera, and that's maybe not as important. I mean, for, for those that, of course, want to be on camera, I would be able to do it all in front of the camera and even behind the camera. Um, learn various control room um, positions. Um, again, editing is key. If you can like edit your own stuff, that's that's. But you know, also, I was I was just having this conversation the other day with someone. It wouldn't hurt to dabble in, in, in marketing and advertising and especially social media these days. I mean, that is, uh, you, you can get paid to market on Twitter and Facebook and Snapchat and various social media platforms. Like that is a career. Um, and if you are good enough at it, you can make a great career with it. Um, and so I just, I encourage students to just 
be as rounded as you possibly can be. Um, even if, you know, you obviously kind of have a goal, you know, you, you want to be a radio voice or you want to be a, a TV host or a personality, um, but be able to do, um, you know, other things around the studio because a lot of times that is your first foot in the door. And once you're in, then you make of the experience what you want. And you kind of move your way. I, in fact, Troy Rich, who is a WT alum, he's older than me. So you probably don't know, but Google him. Uh, mm-hmm. Troy Rich uh, was a great mentor of mine. He, he, um, he was actually uh, one of the contacts that kind of put me in touch with Fox Sports Southwest because he had interned with the Dallas Mavericks with the same contact. Again, this world is entirely too small. But Troy always put, he said, who you know gets you in. And I will tell you, I I hate saying that, but who you know is so key today in just getting the opportunity to be in front of the right people and interviewing and and just getting that opportunity. But once you are in, what you know moves you up or at the very least keeps you there. It is what you make of the experience and you put in what you want to get from it. Um, And so I think as I continue to ramble, um, I I just think... um, the more you can provide for a company, it's, it's like an athlete. You know, if you're, if you're a, a football player and you can play multiple positions, your chances mm-hmm. of getting on the field earlier are much greater than if you pigeonhole yourself into one position. So that's kind of what I compare it to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, tell us about like daily work. What, what kinds of things um, do you have to do in your job now? Well, okay, it's changed a bit, but prior yeah, to this new <laughs> COVID and, and during COVID, yeah, yeah. <laughs> both. BC, BC. Okay, uh, the um, prior, I um, we would host, for instance, I'll just uh, the New Orleans Pelicans is one of my main beats. I've been the the pregame and postgame host, and even sideline reporter, and in, in at various times for them. Um, gosh, for the last seven years, I've covered them for seven seasons now. Um, I would basically post like the 30 minute show prior to tip off. So again, your days in this industry revolve around sporting events and when the sporting events begin. So a lot of, you know, again, nights and weekends, if you want to get into sports, you got to give up your nights and weekends, um, which is fine for me because again, I'm, I love what I do. So I, I don't, I, in fact, it's been weird having like weekends off. Like I'm not used to that. I haven't been since college. So um, this is different, but a lot of times it's, it's kind of the hours you want to put in, how, you know, how much preparation you really want to put into your work as, as a Pelicans host or reporter, you, you kind of, I mean, you want to have your thumb on that beat at all times. You're reading whatever you can get your hands on. You're again, Twitter is like a huge plot. Social media is just a huge platform now and just kind of staying in the know and what's going on, following players and, and kind of getting an inside look at their lives for various stories and, and whatnot. Um, so the work never really stopped, but the hours never really stop. Um, but again, it, it kind of just revolves around, you know, there's a lot of travel. Um, and again, you, you have to sacrifice a lot along the way, you know, the nights, the weekends, you know, holidays or time with family and friends, you know, you're, you're, you're away a lot. Um, and, and that's kind of something that just comes with it. But again, um, I learned early on in covering the College World Series, that was the first sporting event I ever covered as an intern at the, at the World Herald. Um, I was like, gosh, I can, I can make a living? Like, A, not only watching sports, but telling the stories be, you know, behind them and connecting with people, which are things I enjoy doing. I'm like, wow, you know? So um, if you love what you do, it, 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 I know it sounds cliche, but you never really work a day in your life. And Emily, I know you know that. <laughs> And um, a little bit about the COVID side now, are you having to interview people via Zoom or um, are, I know games have changed. What, how else has that impacted your daily life? Yes. So everything has gone pretty much remote now, which, and you and I were discussing prior to this, um, the fact that we're, we're, I mean, how thankful are we that we have the means to communicate remotely like this via Zoom? A lot of our shows, um, are going to be on this sort of platform and you know you know of late I've kind of been and that is one thing I'll, I'll say you know it has been a strange few months without sports um, but that hasn't stopped the storytelling 
the connecting with others. Um, we've been able to do Zoom interviews with, with athletes um, present and past, which has been fun. Um, and, you know, and I, as I thought about it through this, through this time, I'm thinking like, that's kind of why we all got into it is it's the people and the stories and, and maybe not, maybe it's other things for, for others, but for me, that's what it's always been. And we really haven't lost that through this. In fact, like that has carried an even greater impact through this time, um, is sharing, you know, sharing the stories off the court or off the field and getting to know like the people that's been super powerful through this. And that's been very enjoyable um, for me. And, and so um, again, if, if that is, is what you love doing in this business, like that will never stop is what we've learned through this, which is great. You know, there are a lot of students out there who are really interested in working in sports media in various ways. Um, is there other advice you would give them if that's their goal? I know you've mentioned you have to be willing to give up evenings and weekends. Um, what other things would you tell them as they pursue that goal? You know, I, I was lucky enough, obviously, to play um, many sports throughout my life. And then, of course, college softball, um, which for me um, gave me the ability to, it, I, I learned how to communicate and work alongside people of all different personalities, backgrounds, beliefs. I learned discipline. It bred confidence. But I will say, as I think about it, it, you don't have, it's not just sports that gives you that. It is any sort of extracurricular activity or organization like an NBS. I also got that in NBS. It's just kind of um, building on just your character for the future, you know? And, and I mean, you learn so many lessons then for the future that you don't really realize in the moment, but you, you realize down the road, like how, how impactful that was for you. I mean, it was like a melting pot of, again, of all different backgrounds and beliefs and people and personalities. And it was like, you had to learn how to work with that. That's super powerful today. Um, and so I will say, you know, getting involved with those sort of organizations is great. Um, I will also say everyone's journey is different. A mistake I made in my career, one that I've, I've kind of, something I've had to learn how to let go of is, is comparing yourself to others and their journeys. Their journey is, is not yours. Yours is not theirs. Um, everyone goes at different paces. And, and, you know, where you are right now is where you're supposed to be. I know you're, you're looking forward. You're wanting to take that next step and continue to network, continue to learn, continue to pick brains. It will happen. That next step will happen. Again, if you do the footwork, opportunity is going to meet you halfway. So keep at it. But just know that at the end of the day, and Emily, I've shared this quote before because it's like my all-time favorite, but no one is you. And that is your power. There is literally not another you out there and what you can bring to this world. You're the only one. Use that. Utilize that. And know that that, if you focus on that instead of, others around you and what they're doing if you focus on what you bring to the table um i truly believe the universe will grant you the opportunity to to present your gifts to the world in, in the way you're supposed to i know that sounds so like philosophical and cliche but i'm a true believer in that um and i i i also want to say emily i am here for all of you um i had so many people there for me and i i want to be that for the next generation um and so if there's anything I can ever do to help you, um, shadowing opportunities, questions, braces, references, whatever you need, uh, <laughs> I'm here. So I love it. Excellent. That's, that's great advice um, and, and inspiring to think about. So I want to open it up for questions and see if um, Joe or Jim have questions for you today. And thank you, Erin. I appreciate you answering my questions. Um, I have one question, Erin, if, if, uh, if you could care to share any insights that you have on being a woman involved in sports reporting. Um, have you had to deal with anything uh, worth remarking specifically related to, to your position? You know, I will say I am lucky um, that I haven't. Um, in fact, Michelle Tafoya, um, who, is, who is someone I've always looked up to, actually um, 
was on a podcast recently and had some, you know, had some comments on that that I thought were pretty powerful. And it, it made a lot of sense. I think we are past this point in making it about like male, you know, being a female in this business is kind of an an anomaly. Like it's, it's, I don't know. I feel like we're, we're past that to the point where I feel I am looked at as an equal in terms of just how I do my job. You know, it's, it's just, can you, you know, how well can you do it? And and you got to know your stuff. I will say something I learned early on while the times have changed, while the, while the tide has shifted. And I, I appreciate that, that, that the whole female and sports thing isn't as, um, I don't know, like centered or kind of like, you know, pointed out as it once was. Um, I, I will say early on, I really had to be on my P's and Q's as a female. I, I had to be extra prepared. That is something Dana Larson um, a colleague of mine taught me taught me early on as well. She said, you have to be extra prepared. I mean, you have to really know your stuff inside and out. And you have to be so prepared that if someone or something, technology even, throws you a curveball, the prompter stops or whatever the case may be, you can, you can react on your feet. You can think quickly because um, unfortunately, viewers were not as forgiving with females making mistakes when I first started as they were with males, whether it be like mispronouncing a name or getting a, getting a, a stat wrong. I mean, you, you name it. Um, and, and so I think that, that just helped me in learning how to be prepared in this business. Um, I take great pride in my preparation and, and, um, and just making sure again, I'm, I am ready to, it's like, a, a, again, it goes back to my, softball days, man. I, I got to be so prepared that I can react on my feet and, and it's just a natural instinct. That's kind of how I view it in my daily profession. But Joe, I will tell you, I, I like that the whole female and sports thing isn't as um, like, I don't know. I don't know how to, like, you know, it's, it's, it's not as um, unique, I guess, or, or mm. as it once was, if that makes sense. Oh, absolutely. Um, in, in my market, it's a, uh... It's probably about 50-50 in terms of uh, males and females uh, in the in the sports anchor and reporter uh, chairs, and that's re- that's really good to see. Love it, love it. I appreciate the question though because that's that's one I always get. Um, but you know what? It is it is men like you and a lot of the male colleagues that I've had along the way that have had my back, that have been in my corner, and have um, you know supported me and and made me feel equal. Um, I I'm very thankful for for those men that have um, been put in my path um, because they have certainly been um, mentors and shoulders that I've I've leaned on and and so I'm I'm thankful for that. Good good to hear. Knowing that it's kind of hard to predict the future with what's happened in the last few months, um, you must have some goals and, and some direction you're headed. So where are you headed? Oh, gosh. Um, well, I'm a mess, Jim, so I don't know where the heck. <laughs> I'm wearing sweats with my nice top today. That's, I'm headed to the kitchen after this. I don't know. Listen, I, I'm very happy. Um, I'm very happy where where I am right now. I obviously, um, I would like to see like my, my host role grow. Um, I would, I, you know, I'm always, I I love any sort of new opportunities, you know, new sporting events to cover and and whatnot. I've just, I've been so fortunate to do a lot in in my time. When I first began at foxsports.com, in addition to covering college football recruiting, you know, I I got to kind of, I, I had an opportunity to cover, uh, various Super Bowl events when they were here in Dallas, um, the NFL Combine, um, the MLB Winter Meetings, the Men's College World Series, Big 12 Men's and Women's, women's Basketball Tournaments. I've been able to kind of experience a lot of different events and 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 sports. And I don't know. It's just it's I'm I'm very grateful for. I sometimes I don't feel deserving of it sometimes um, because I'm I'm just I've truly enjoyed it. Um, I think as I move forward, I, I've become, and again, in my old age, I have become more cognizant of looking back and thanking those that helped get me here today. There are so many. Oh my gosh, the list is so long. Uh, I don't even want to name anyone because I feel like I'm going to like leave people off the list, but I have, I, I've, thank you is, is 
very powerful. Saying, you know, the word thank you, turning back and, and thanking someone that helped you along this journey is key. So I will tell you, anyone listening or, or watching, make sure to make time to, to thank those. Even if it's like a shadowing opportunity, write them an email, send them a card. That leaves a lasting impression as well. Um, just that gratitude along the way. Um, and, and I think as I, as I move forward, I, I want to I wanna lift like the next generation, because I had so many of those lifting me. Like I want to do that for, um, for the next wave of Aaron Hardigan. So hopefully, hopefully aren't it a little bit more normal than I am. No. Um, I, I don't know that. I think that's kind of like what I, what I want to do. I'd love to, I'd love to teach. I know Emily, like I, I look at you and I'm like, wow, like you're in a position of empowering like the next generation. I think that would be so much fun. So maybe I should pick your brain on that and how you got started in that. Be happy to talk to you about doing that someday. <laughs> but Jim, I appreciate the question. You guys, you guys are awesome. And that this university is so near and dear to me. Um, I am always here always, always, always to help in any way I can and give back. So I am just so extremely honored that you asked me to be a part of this. Um, I hope I, my rambling has like kept the attention of a few that have hung on. Um, but again, I'm, I'm here if y'all need anything at all. Excellent. Joe or Jim, do you have any other questions? No, no not at this point. Uh, Aaron, thank you for, for sharing and, and, uh, giving us uh, some really good insights into, into your part of, uh, of the media world. Erin, I do have um, one question related to on networking. Is there anything different that students need to look at other than, you know, there's LinkedIn, which is a professional networking, you know, site they can use for jobs, but is there something different they need to look at if they are specifically interested in sports media? Is there another resource there? I'm so glad you asked about that because I can't believe I, I haven't brought this up yet. That is one thing I will encourage all of you to do. Whatever it is you want to be right now, if there is someone you watch, someone you idolize, someone you want to be the next, uh, right? Reach out to them. Like, re like um, gosh, uh, Amanda Goodman, who was uh, with Channel 10 when I was in uh, Canyon, when I was at WT, she was at Channel 10 in Amarillo. I remember I was like, oh my gosh, like, you know, I, I, I loved her work and everything. I called her up. I'm like, can we go grab coffee? Like, can we, like, you know, I'm just like this little college student. I'm like, she probably doesn't have time for me. But I'm like, can we, I'd love to grab coffee with you and just, again, pick your brain and ask you, like, how, how do I, how do I get to where you are? What do I need to do? Mm -hmm. And, and that was when I learned that if you ask for help, people are so willing to give it and, and give you their time. You know, she met me for coffee. I mean, I met like Emily Jones in Lubbock and, I, you know, so again, I will tell you, whoever it is you want to be, or if it's someone you idolize, reach out to them. And, and again, you might not be able to meet in person in, in today's new normal, but there, people are still willing to hop on a phone call or even like, hey, can we Zoom? Like, I'd love to just, I'd meet you and introduce myself and ask you a few questions. I found that people are so willing um, to do that if, if you just ask. So I will encourage all of you to do that at some point this year is reach out to someone that you admire and ask them what you need to do to get to where they are, because they may have a whole set of other, you know, bits of advice for you that, than I do. Um, and uh, I don't know, I just think that's super powerful. People that have done that for me, like have left a lasting impression. And when we are seeking interns, you know, interns or hiring positions, and I'm like, I remember them, they made it a point to reach out to me and to want to meet me and, and, and seek, you know, advice from out. They were memorable. And, and that plays key down the road in, uh, in hiring opportunities. Excellent. Most, most people actually really want to do that. And they, they're in, in, in a real sense, they're honored that they have the opportunity to do it. And that's, that is, uh, uh, there, that, that's a gold mine out there that many students don't even consider uh, to to explore, um, I always have talked with with my students uh, about going on informational interviews, uh, not looking for a job, but trying to find out about the the work that is done at a particular a station or, or production company or whatever. And uh, there's usually someone who's willing to to give the time, and, and they're happy to do so. And that's that's a great resource. 
No doubt. No doubt about it. Um, yeah, this is, I don't know. It's, 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 again, it's what you, it's what you want to make of it. You know, it's, it's on you. Um, and, and again, what you do, the experience you gain, the repetitions you get and, and the resume you present is one thing, but it's also how you present you, um, how proactive you are in kind of seeking these contacts and asking to meet in, you know, in, 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 um, you know, in, in kind of how persistent you are in, in wanting these opportunities as well. I mean, that, that want, that desire, that passion mm -hmm. also um, speaks volumes as well. So um, don't be afraid to go, go after what you want. Show them. Uh, tell them, I want this. How do I, how do I get there? Tell, you tell me how I get there, you know, because I want it that badly. And they're always willing to help you out. Excellent advice. Well, thank you so much, Erin. We appreciate your time today um, and sharing those insights. Very valuable insights. There you go. Go Buffs. Um, <laughs> we really appreciate your time and so excited to see you and get to catch up with you and, um, and to just keep our eyes on where you're headed next and, and in your work. So thank well, you. Well, where I'm headed next is hopefully to that new stadium this fall. There you go. So that's <laughs> on the bucket list. There you go. So there you I'm, go. Uh, I'm hoping to see you all out there very soon. But Jim, Emily, and Joe, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for having me.